In the 70s and 80s, top dot notch in facial recognition, daily life, getting rich, raising children, Wang Yuching died suddenly after working overtime and traveled to a family of seven in the late 1970s, becoming the nanny of the entire family. The original owner worked tirelessly for his entire family, working tirelessly for a lifetime. As a result, the whole family was like white-eyed wolves, and after sucking their blood, they drove the original owner out of the house and froze to death on the street. She quickly packed up her things and followed the rural man who had always been a child since childhood back home. Life was comfortable, and the family was harmonious. The man was not only a household worth 10,000 yuan, but also the richest man in the city after many years. The whole family began to flatter her, and she said, How many heads should you kowtow to me? The whole family kowtowed loudly, and she said, I didn't even say I kowtowed before forgiving you. What should we do if there are too many high dot quality products in the production team? She upholds the belief that whoever scolds her will scold them, whoever gossip about her will gossip about them, whoever pokes her spine will poke their spine, rejecting spiritual internal friction and trying to internalize others. She cannot bear any emotional losses. What should I do if there is a big white lotus causing trouble? She held on to it, living a bit murderous, but also a bit tea-like, shaking the white lotus flower back and forth. Chapter 1 Crossing the 1970s as a Nanny You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Wang Chui died suddenly while working overtime. A few seconds before her sudden death, she even posted on her social media. 10 o'clock I worked hard for another 12 hours today, it's been tough, worker. God may have experienced the helplessness and sadness of working people, allowing her to live a lifetime again, traveling to a family of seven in the late 1970s. Ranked second, his name is Wang Yuching. She thinks it doesn't matter if the era is a bit poor and there are more family members. Most importantly, this name sounds too unpleasant, right? Wang Yuching lay on the floor of the main room, with frames of the original owner's life from birth to death presented in his mind. Before he could sort it out clearly, he heard someone cursing in his ear. You stupid idiot, I've already told you that the shampoo and alkali are gone. Why haven't you bought them yet? Why are you lying on the ground pretending to be dead? I also secretly use some of my mom's snow cream. If mom comes back and finds out, you can say it's for you. Don't be fooled by it. The person who scolded her was named Wang Yuyen, the third in the family. She was twenty years old and dropped out of high school to avoid going to the countryside. Now, she works as a temporary worker in a factory. Wang Yuqing was conscious, but due to the excessive fatigue of the original owner's body, she couldn't open her eyes or get up for half a day. A younger brother and a younger sister were eating dinner around the table, turning a blind eye to her unconscious second sister. I'm not sure how long I lay down afterwards, but in the end, I was carried to a hard bunk bed by the original parents who had taken relatives home. Silly second is already 20.2 years old. Anyway, he also has a baby kiss with the fourth son of the G family. They don't mind silly second's foolish head and brain. Why don't we agree to that marriage first? Agree with me, what do you think? We are dual employees and city dwellers. Do they think the G family is suitable for us to become relatives? Our family is poor, with a few dilapidated houses. We only have a blind old lady in her sixties or seventies, and G Lao San has three children. Why did Silly Air marry us? I raised a child to be his nanny. Even those with good conditions at home don't look up to us, and those with poor conditions don't look up to you. No one will become an old lady by then, and outsiders will laugh at our family. Humph, just stay at home if no one wants to. If others laugh at us, let's live our lives. Wang Yuching had almost figured out the life of the original owner. She secretly opened her eyes and stood a middle dot aged couple wearing grey blue work clothes under the yellowed light. If it weren't for her knowing everything, she would probably have thought that this mother loved her original owner so much and didn't want her to marry a poor person to endure hardship. 
In fact, in her mind, sons are used to pass on the family line, daughters are used to command and care for the elderly, and daughters who marry cannot subsidize their parents. It is better not to marry and stay at home to serve them. Instead of letting her work as a nanny at someone else's house, it's better to stay at her own house. In addition to the family needing to use the original owner as a maid, her beloved son, Lao Wu, who is only six years old, also needs the careful care of the original owner as an ancestor. When Wang Yuching thought about it, a sour feeling surged in her heart. It was precisely because the original owner was left at home this time that she never married them and spent her whole life being a cow or a horse. The most outrageous thing is that before Lin Xueme passed away, she forced her to kneel on the ground and swear, swear, you must drag your younger brother to grow up and have him start a family and career before you can get married, otherwise he will be plagued by various illnesses and will not end well. The original owner worked hard for his family for a lifetime, dedicating his entire life to them without any respect or love. In the end, he was kicked out and frozen to death on the street. She fed a family of ungrateful relatives with her self-proclaimed kindness, but in the end, she was mistaken for a fool. While sympathizing with and sympathizing with the original owner, Wang Yuching felt that she was foolish, filial, promiscuous, and had a heart of the Virgin Mary, without principles or bottom lines, which led to the whole family becoming even worse and rightfully sucking blood on her. But unfortunately, I crossed over to her body. It seems that the heavens do not have much sympathy for her as a new era worker. She continued to close her eyes and pretend to sleep, citing laziness and unwillingness to work. Lin Xueme and Wang Jiandong are still discussing in their room. Wang Jiandong took out a pack of cadre cigarettes, lit one, and said, Today, when I went to the countryside to visit relatives, you also saw me. As I passed by the entrance of the Ji family, the old lady of the Ji family insisted on holding my hand and telling me about the doll's marriage. She even suggested choosing an auspicious day for the matchmaker and Ji Xuaning to come and propose a marriage. Lin Xueme let out a sigh of disgust and said, He can't imagine it. What can he do just by being a child? He's poor and unremarkable, and he still wants to marry a wife and climb high. He can't even step into my doorstep. Wang Jiandong felt it made sense. He glanced at the person on the bed and asked, Do you want to take them to the factory health center to see? Is there really something wrong? Lin Xuemei turned around and opened the door, If you get kicked by a fly, you have to go see a doctor. It's just lazy cancer. After speaking, the light was turned on and the couple left. Wang Yuching learned that the matchmaker and Ji Xuanning came to the Wang family to propose marriage the day after tomorrow, but they didn't even come in and were scolded by Lin Xuame for splashing a basin of water. Do you think it was because the Ji family was poor that Lin Xuame refused to let the original owner marry? Even if you have money, it's not up to the original owner. Because four years later, in 1980, Ji Xuanning became a household worth 10,000 yuan and appeared in the newspaper, with unlimited fame. However, Lin Xueme used her doll kiss to force the Ji family to marry her third daughter, Wang Yuyan. After marrying Ji Xuanning, Wang Yuyan lived a comfortable life for one or two years, working tirelessly without worrying about food or drink. She even had her former owner serve as a nanny and burn around like a roasted bun, wearing a watch every day. She is not a good person or a smart person. When she married and treated Ji Xuanning's three children, she was the kind of derogatory stepmother. Not only did she treat her grandmother like this, but she said she was blind and never died. Ji Xuanning opened a factory and was too busy to know about it. Grandma is an honest person who thinks about home and everything is going well, and the children are also threatened and dare not say anything. It wasn't until Wang Yuyan couldn't help but feel lonely and secretly had an affair with one of Ji Xuaning's brothers, which was exposed by a woman. Ji Xuaning finally found out that this had driven her out of the house, and later married an old man because she couldn't bear children. Wang Yuqing has a vague idea of Ji Xuaning's appearance in her mind. The original owner may have only had a few encounters with Ji Xuaning while serving as a nanny for Wang Yuyan, so there are very few memories of him. 
Just know that Ji Xuaning has a good character and is also good dot looking, just like the male actors in the eight model plays. He was not only a retired soldier, but also intelligent, capable, and intelligent. Later, he went from being a millionaire in the 1980s to a billionaire in the new era. Does Wang Yuching suddenly feel familiar with this name? Upon careful consideration, isn't Tay the CEO of his own company? I don't know if he paid the compensation for his sudden death or not. She has experienced a tiring life once, and this time she doesn't want to be so tired. She just wants to be a salted fish, lying on her thighs and feeding it equally. This is not shameful, but a wise choice. I originally wanted to plan a life where I would embrace my thighs and reach the pinnacle of my life, but my body was very tired and tired. I slept until the next morning and was awakened by a harsh voice. Damn it, you lazy guy. You don't even want to get up and cook breakfast. When your older sister comes back, you can fry her a fried egg. Chapter 2 Have your entire family not grown hands? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Wang Yuching opened her eyes irritably and sat up from the hard bunk bed, feeling sore in her waist and back. She roughly surveyed the room, which was made of blue bricks, white tiles, and a large mud wall. The room is very narrow and crowded, with a bunk bed and a wooden cabinet with missing paint and legs, along with a stool. The rest of the place was piled up with various old miscellaneous items, and there was actually a pile of firewood in the corner. A few mice were running around inside during the day, shivering uncontrollably. It can be seen that the house is pretty good. Although the room is a miscellaneous room, it's a bit miserable, but at least it's also a single room. She got up and stood in front of the cracked mirror in the cabinet, with a thin body, a pale complexion, tired eyebrows, and a lack of light in her eyes. Wearing patched men's work clothes, struggling to make ends meet, tied in a large thick black braid, the evaluation was mediocre. She opened the wardrobe and found that the clothes were pitifully scarce and tattered, with almost no other daily necessities. Just then, Lin Xuame's roar came from outside. You're dying, are you deaf? Didn't you hear me call you? Wang Yuching went to bed and continued to sleep. After a while, the third wife Wang Yuyan kicked the door open and stood angrily in front of the bed. Silly second, don't you have long ears? Mom keeps calling you, why don't you get up and make breakfast? Big sister is back, she wants to eat fried eggs. The elder sister in her mouth is Wang Yulan, who is currently eight months pregnant. Wang Yuching's eyelids didn't even move. In a fit of anger, Wang Yuyan lifted her blanket and said, are you still asleep? Our family is still waiting for breakfast, and after breakfast, we have to rush to work. How can we eat idle food like you do every day? Eating idle food, she is Lin Xuemei, who studies. Lin Xuemei almost scolds her original owner for eating idle food every day, and the whole family follows suit. By the way, I didn't wash my clothes last night, and the dishes on the table were confiscated. Why are you so lazy like a pig? Pigs are even more diligent than you. Wang Yuching lifted her eyelids and forcefully snatched the bedding from her hand to cover her body. Wang Yuyan was taken aback for a moment. She used to cook in the kitchen at this time and even brought breakfast to her room with just one word. Wang Yuching was thinking, should I tell this sister that the man she will marry in a few years is not only a millionaire, but also a billionaire? Do you want to remind her to be good to the elderly and children after getting married, after all, her belly cannot bear children, and she shouldn't be so hungry and thirsty to steal people. She will have a sky-high wealth in the future. Wang Yuching suddenly grinned and said, Pooh, what a beautiful idea. Demons and monsters bask in the sunshine and think beautifully. Not only won't I tell you, but don't even think about those good years. What are you laughing at? What's wrong with you? I'm talking to you, and I always pretend to be lazy. If you don't wake up, I'll have my mom hit you with a broom. The day Lin Xuemei gave birth to Wang Yuyan happened to be the day her mother in law passed away. 
She felt that Wang Yuyan's birth was a good omen, and coupled with Wang Yuyan's sweet mouth and ability to say nice things, Lin Xuemei treated her well. Don't you have long hands? Wang Yuqing opened her eyes and looked at her coldly. Wang Yuyan was confused for a moment. For the first time, she heard the timid and cowardly silly second retort, so angry that her teeth clenched and she said, who didn't have hands. At this moment, the elder sister Wang Yulan touched her stomach and walked in, saying, Third, I have brought good things for you, fourth, and fifth in the hall to pick them up by myself. Wang Yuyan smiled smugly and said, Thank you, big sister. Wang Yulan said to Wang Yuqing again, Silly second, I don't want to eat the fried eggs. Go and take my things back to the room and tidy them up. In the main room, hang my clothes and don't wrinkle them. Be careful not to drop the rest of the things when placing them. They are very expensive. Don't you have long hands either? Wang Yuqing still lay in bed, repeating what she had just said. Wang Yulan didn't react for a moment. Although she was also a daughter, she was still the first child in the family and her parents treated her well. At that time, she graduated from high school and the up to the mountains and down to the countryside movement was in full swing. She followed her to the countryside and met her husband, who was ten years older than her. He worked as a projectionist, had a high income, a secure job, and was very prestigious. During this period, she enrolled in universities and colleges, and successfully obtained the admission notice after taking the exam. She returned to the county town and worked as an accountant in a mechanical factory with the help of her husband. Last year we got married and our living conditions were very good. From time to time, we would subsidize our parents. Lin Xuemei suddenly had a strong maternal love for her eldest daughter and often laughed uncontrollably, saying that she was a golden phoenix flying out of her nest. Wang Yulan feels that her position at home can be on par with Lin Xuemei. She will treat the original owner the way Lin Xuemei treats her. Wang Yuqing doesn't serve her like the original owner did. She came back this time talking about visiting relatives, with the purpose of raising a baby and giving birth to a child for a month. The original owner had been attentive to her and even helped her take care of her child by defecating and urinating. However, she was criticized for not attending school and not being able to read, and was not allowed to claim to be her child's second aunt. Silly too, peel peanuts for me. Mine, mine too. Wang Yujuan and Wang Yubao ran over with a handful of peanuts, looking very imposing at a young age. Didn't your whole family grow hands? Wang Yuqing impatiently stared at them. These two are twins, born just in time for the family planning in 1971. Although Wang Yujuan is also a girl, she was born with Lin Xuemei's beloved son, and she also has a fondness for her. Wang Yujuan was supported by her former employer to attend university, and she felt ashamed of her and cut off her relationship. Wang Yubao, also known as the younger brother who was forced by the original owner's mother to take care of and start a family, was the culprit who drove the original owner out of the family. Wang Yuyan took Wang Yulan's hand and said, Big sister, silly air actually said that our whole family has no hands. Wang Yulan's face darkened as she took out a commanding aura of being the head of the household to teach her maid a lesson. You speak with a heavy tone. If you keep talking like this, believe it or not, you'll be scolded. Wang Yuqing resisted the urge to slap her a few times. After all, she couldn't beat six people in this family alone, and she still had to live for a day. She was a bit stubborn now and had to leave this family first. On the day she returned, she would definitely give them a few slaps. She asked playfully, is older sister also so powerful in her husband's house? Although Wang Yulan is not very noble, her life at her husband's house is not easy. She was bullied to death by her mother. In law and sister. In law. Although she works as an accountant, she is also helped by her husband, and her salary is not as good as her husband's. Her sister. In law's family is an old cadre, so compared to the parents of dual employees, they are not a big deal. Wang Yulan was trembling with anger, her liver was swollen and painful with anger. 
This was her heart disease. The neighbor next door occasionally asked, and she had an impulse to kill. What are you doing, what are you doing? Why are you still stuck in bed? Silly second, do you want to knock on me? Didn't you hear me say that your older sister is going home and wants to eat fried eggs? Your older sister's things are all in the main room, so why don't you move back to your room? Lin Xuemei rushed to the door of the room, her voice deafening. Chapter 3 The market is filled with a strong atmosphere of fireworks and fireworks. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. After quickly filing a complaint, Wang Yuyan pointed at Wang Yuqing and said, She just asked Big Sister if she's also so powerful at her parents' house. Mom, look, it's making Big Sister angry. Wang Yulan. Dot. Lin Xuemei glanced at Wang Yulan as if she could see some clues. She picked up a firewood by the door and rushed up to beat it, saying, You lazy eater. If you don't beat up the house and expose the tiles for a day, I won't kill you. Wang Yuqing dodged agilely, then jumped off the bed and gave Lin Xuemei a hard push. Lin Xuemei sat on the ground, feeling a bit dizzy. Before, how could she hit this silly guy? Even if she hit him to death, she would shrink and not even dare to move, let alone backhand. Do you dare to push yourself even if you can't run now? It's upside down. She was full of anger and rushed to chase after the firewood. Wang Yuqing looked at Lin Xuemei with a tiger-like posture behind her. If it weren't for her being the mother of the original owner and leaving the house smoothly, she would definitely have pressed her to the ground and pulled her hair. Lin Xuemei caught up in her shoes. I'll beat you to death. You dare to run away, even raising a dog is better than you are. The dog can even please its owner. When I gave birth to you, I should have kicked you to death. If your wings were hard, wouldn't you dare to say that our whole family has no hands, and even dare to say that your big sister, you scumbag, why don't you die? Wang Yuqing listened to the unpleasant curses behind her and recalled the reason why the original owner was not favored, because Lin Xuemei had a daughter in her first child and was eager to have a son in her second child. She believed her mother's words and took the folk prescription, pregnancy-changing medicine, which was not only unpleasant but also almost caused a miscarriage. I thought to myself that if I were someone with a handle, it wouldn't be a big deal to suffer, but I ended up being a daughter. My husband was unhappy, my mother dot in dot law frowned, my sister dot in dot law laughed at her, and my mother dot in dot law even took the gold bracelet she had given her back. She packed her things and went to her eldest son's house to serve her daughter dot in dot law overnight. From then on, my mother dot in dot law and daughter dot in dot law became enemies. Lin Xuemei originally had a serious preference for boys over girls, and she didn't like her second daughter. She would either hit or scold her on weekdays, turning the original owner into a timid and cowardly person who couldn't speak, didn't know how to come, had no vision, and was cowardly. This further made Lin Xuemei dislike her. Wang Yuqing felt that even so, she still couldn't understand why she could use such dirty language to attack her biological child. In fact, the pain of skin and flesh does not cause extreme pain, but rather the sharp and vicious curses that leave deep scars. There was also hatred in the original owner's bones, but it was more of a sense of inferiority. Every time she was scolded, she would lower her head, and the more she scolded, the deeper she lowered her head. She lacked the courage to resist and accepted it numbly. At this moment, Wang Yuyan and Wang Yulan followed suit, and Long Fengtai also began to coax and try to stop Wang Yuqing. Wang Jiandong came out of the room listening to the commotion and saw this scene. He shouted sternly, Stop here, where are you going? You look like you've been beaten all day. Wang Yuqing had nowhere to run, so she turned around and ran towards the gate. Lin Xuemei stood at the door, afraid to catch up. Her neighbors were all from the same factory. On weekdays, because her eldest son dot in dot law was a projectionist and her eldest daughter was an accountant, everyone held her in their arms. She loves face, as the saying goes, family shame should not be exposed, and it doesn't sound good when this news spreads. 
Wang Yuching knew this before running out. Otherwise, she would have stayed at home for a whole day and would have felt very tormented if she didn't work or not. Moreover, as a person in the era of technology, society, and informatization, she is still very curious about the markets of the planned economy era. Traveling through them will definitely broaden her horizons. Wang Yuching arrived directly at the market, shuttling through the crowded streets, feeling both excited and amazed in her heart. The cities she lived in were all bustling with flowers, lights and wine, and bustling with traffic. Although the streets of this era were somewhat dilapidated and not large enough, there was a strong atmosphere of fireworks and simple folk customs in the world. Everyone's face was full of joy and bustle. She was dazzled by the sight of various traditional snacks, handmade items, agricultural tools, fruits, vegetables, daily necessities, as well as leather goods sellers, blacksmiths, shavers, storytellers, and even miscellaneous items on the street, except for grains, peanuts, and pork that were not centrally purchased and sold. All kinds of stalls occupied the street tightly. It is now 1976, coinciding with the special period of cutting off the tail, and the free market in some remote areas has become active again. Farmers in the area where the original owner is located can plant vegetables, fruits, and raise livestock in their own plots, and sell them at the market. The original owner lived in the family courtyard of a state-owned fertilizer plant in Swain County. Both of them were the first-generation employees of the fertilizer plant, earning a monthly salary of 44.10 yuan at the fourth level. In this era of planned economy, working in state.owned factories is the dream of countless people, which is the iron rice bowl unit. When the couple went to visit relatives in the countryside, they claimed to be city dwellers and organized and walked with their heads held high, exuding an air of grandeur. If there were more scenery, there would be more scenery. So I can understand why they look down on even Ji Xuaning who has participated in the military. Wang Yuching saw a four- or five-year-old child sitting on a cart licking an popsicle. When he saw his shining gaze, he quickly protected the popsicle. Wang Yuching thinks it's really a joke. People who have eaten ice cream and ice cream would still be envious of your one-cent popsicle. It's just that the eyes can't move on their own. It was not until the child's father pushed the cart away that she withdrew her gaze. Although there were no tall things around, everything was interesting and strange, and there was no counterfeit or inferior quality. Today happened to be the big market, and there were even more crowds. People from all over the country came to rush to the market because the workers had to go to work and the members of the society had to leave, so they had to rush to the market every day. Wang Yuching saw the farmer next to him pulling a cart to sell cabbage and tomatoes. The cabbage was lush and the tomatoes were green and red, all using farmyard manure, which was very nutritious and healthy. Unlike most vegetables nowadays that are treated with pesticides, hormones, or chemicals for preservation. In today's society, people's living standards have improved, and they are tired of eating big fish and meat. Instead, they want to eat these local specialties, farmhouse dishes. And even miss the simple and simple rural life of childhood. It is the food stalls that attract her most. Not to mention the extreme shortage of food in this era, people worship and are eager to eat. Even the rich people who have eaten spicy hot pot, barbecue, hot pot and milk tea in this new era are drooling strongly at the moment. Wonton, steamed stuffed buns, deep dot fried dough sticks, baked sweet potatoes, bean jelly, sugar cake, potsticker, soup with pepper. The clamor of selling made Wang Yuching's heart itch and her stomach quack. She remembered that the original owner had never eaten these since he was born, and her sister, sister and brother could eat an ice lolly and drink a bottle of soda from time to time, especially Wang Yubao, who had tasted these breakfast foods many times. Parents of other families may secretly hide behind their backs to give snacks to their beloved children, while Lin Shuame is different, directly giving snacks to the other children in front of the original owner. Wang Yuching feels quite chilly. Chapter 4 A Simple Lesson for Wang Yuyan You are listening at NovelFull.audio
Wang Yuching finally arrived at the shaving booth, cut her thick braid shoulder high, and then used scissors to cut the ends of her hair into small pieces. She then trimmed her vigorous bangs. Now she has changed her hairstyle, her energy has increased, her eyes have become lively, her expression has become lively, and her overall appearance has instantly doubled countless times. Upon closer inspection, the original owner is not actually ugly. Her face is bright and grand, with three-dot-dimensional facial features and clear eyebrows and eyes. Her skin is a bit dark and yellow, and her body is a bit thin. If these points are improved, is she a good beauty? At this moment, she was somewhat out of place with the people coming and going on the street, and of course, she also attracted a lot of attention. The young girl praised her, while the old woman whispered about her hairstyle being out of place. As for her braid, which sold for $1.20.5, she didn't know whether it was too much or too little. She always had some money in hand. She took the money to stroll around the snack stand five or six times and then gritted her teeth to buy a large bowl of 20.5 cents wonton. After all, the rest of mantu, steamed buns, cakes. All need food stamps. She squatted beside and ate delicious wonton, which tasted mellow, tender, fresh and delicious. She also remembered that she had seen 50 cents on the ground and didn't stoop to pick up a single yuan. She didn't rush home even after eating and drinking enough, because during the day only her elder sister Wang Yulan was at home, so she naturally wouldn't open the door for herself. It's different when it gets dark. Lin Xuame is afraid of running away and afraid of dying outside. If things get too big, it won't be good, and she also needs a nanny to work at home. Wang Yuching wandered around the town until it was dark again. It took the workers half an hour after work to grab some food and return home. The whole family gathered around the table to eat. The door opened by Wang Yuyan, after all, she is not at home, and the person being summoned will definitely become her. Wang Yuyan held her rice bowl and said coldly, I thought you were planning to die outside, why did you just come back? Mom, silly air died and came back. Lin Xueme placed her bowls and chopsticks heavily on the table. Just as she rushed out and wanted to curse at her, she saw her mysteriously winking at Wang Yuyan and saying, I left your room. Then she rushed towards Wang Yuyan's room. Wang Yuyan had a bewildered expression on her face. She led Lin Xueme to her room and said as she walked, Mom, you can beat her to death. You've been lazy stealing all day, I don't know what's going on outside. You're still very nervous now. When Wang Yuching came out of the room, she was blocked by Lin Xueme and Wang Yuyan. Wang Yuyan frowned and said, What are you doing in my room? Didn't you say so? Don't go to my room casually. Wang Yuching blinked at her and whispered, Yuyan left it there. Wang Yuyan circled and said, What's there? At this moment, she said with sharp eyes, Mom, look, silly air cut his hair. Lin Xueme jumped up in anger and pointed at her, cursing, You wild slave, you loser. You ran out all day and even cut your hair. Who asked you to cut it? Wang Yuyan added oil and vinegar and said, Mom, didn't you say that her hair needs to be trimmed until the Chinese New Year to buy a cannon for her younger brother? She actually cut it and probably spent the money on it. I owe her a lot. The original owner was beaten at ordinary times without the instigation of Wang Yuyan. It was clearly a close sister. Wang Yuyan never thought she was a sister. Once she forgot to bring a lunchbox, and the original owner sent it to the factory for her. A group of colleagues of Wang Yuyan laughed at the heels and ran away. She felt humiliated and slapped the original owner in the face of everyone. Lin Xueme was furious and reached out to slap her head a few times. Wang Yuching quickly dodged and spoke up, it was Yuyan who asked me to cut it. I didn't spend the money, it was just placed in the box under her bed. Wang Yuyan often instigated the original owner to cut off her braids and buy her snow cream, but the original owner dared not and never listened to her, after all, she was still very foolish and filial. Wang Yuyan's face changed drastically and she said, 
What are you talking about? When did I ask you to cut your braids? Wang Yuching looked serious and said, Why don't you forget? Don't you often steal mom's ice cream? Last night, you saw that mom's ice cream was almost gone, and you didn't dare to steal it for fear of being discovered. Then you asked me to cut off my braid. You still have some private money to buy ice cream together. She added, You used to ask me to cut it every day, and I didn't dare. After all, this braid was meant to be kept for my younger brother to buy a cannon during the Chinese New Year, but didn't I make my mother angry today? I thought I would cut it and give you the money to help me speak up. Wang Yuyan was both anxious and angry, you fart. I didn't ask you to cut your braids yesterday. Didn't you agree when I called you before? The next second, she noticed that she had slipped her tongue and quickly covered her mouth. Lin Xuemei knew very well in her heart that the cream was stolen by the third daughter, and then let the second daughter take the blame. Whoever used it was useless, as she was not blind and could smell it through her nose. She will definitely be scolded if she uses it, otherwise how can she vent her anger? Since silly air is willing to take the blame, then scold her. As for the third person who wants to raise money to buy snow cream, she believes it. The third person is very beautiful, and when he hears about private money, it becomes a big deal. She was so angry that her face turned pale. The third son earns 17.84 yuan per month, and he usually eats and drinks at home in the morning and evening, and at noon in the cafeteria. Therefore, he only gives her one yuan of pocket money each month and pays the rest. Where did she get her private money? Lin Xuemei stepped forward and took out a paper box from under the bed. Wang Yuyan rushed up and hugged the cardboard box in her arms, her face full of nervousness and her eyes filled with anxiety and fear. Mom! Don't listen to her talk nonsense. I don't have any private money. Lin Xuemei forcefully snatched the box and opened it to see that there were twenty yuan, big and small, and six yuan of snow cream inside, which was enough for her to buy three boxes. Lin Xuemei counted one by one and asked, Silly two, how much did you sell your hair for? Wang Yuching replied, One piece. Lin Xuemei looked at Wang Yuyan with a calm face and roared, Where did you get the remaining nineteen yuan? Ah! Wang Yuyan's face was pale, her legs were trembling, and she couldn't explain where the money came from, but she fiercely scratched Wang Yuching with her eyes. Lin Xuemei was also a shrewd person and guessed, did your salary increase? I said you work for two or three years, so it's impossible not to get a raise. Wang Yuyan stubbornly refused to admit it. Lin Xuemei got angry and went straight up, pinching and beating her, shouting and cursing, you damn thing, you eat and drink at home every day, and I'll wear clothes for you to live in. Lazy cows, lazy horses, and a lot of feces and urine are fine. How dare you hide your private money? Wang Yuyan hugged her head and shouted, Ah! It hurts. Mom, I dare not, I dare not, Wu Wu. Lin Xuemei finally grabbed her ear and went to the main hall, asking her various questions in front of the family. She finally admitted that her salary had increased last year, to 19.84 yuan. He also said that some of the money was used to watch movies or go to a gathering with his colleagues to buy something. As for saving this money, he wanted to buy a Dacron floral dress. Chapter 5 Ji Xuanning's Matchmaker Visits to Propose Marriage You are listening at NovelFull.audio In this era, Dacron is a free ticket supply that can be purchased in state-owned department stores. If anyone has one thing, it represents a foreign style and trend, and walking on the street causes envy from many people. Wang Yuyan loves beauty and vanity, so she naturally wants a high dot quality floral long dress. She finally saved more than 20 yuan and now it's all gone. She hates Wang Yuching to the bone in her heart. She cried and said, Fool, I didn't even ask her to cut her braids yesterday, and she didn't put any money in. I already had 20 yuan in me. Wang Yuching spoke up and said, It's already time for Yuyan. Why don't you admit it? 
you not only ask me to cut my braids, but you often ask me for money for my mom to buy groceries. Upon hearing this, Lin Xuame knocked on her back with a broom. She was very resistant to hiding private money. When Wang Jiandong secretly hid a few yuan of private money, she caught her and scolded, You dare to hide private money today, you dare to hide women tomorrow. She almost got divorced later. She is the mistress of this family, and everyone must be obedient to her without any selfishness. She scolded Wang Yuyan as, raising mice and biting cloth bags. After the last beating and scolding, she was fined to wash dishes and clothes, and the money was confiscated. She paid all her future salary and did not give any pocket money. Wang Yuyan stared at Wang Yuching with hatred and said, Silly second, you can handle it. Wait for me, you can't expect to have a good life in the future. Wang Yuching is so scared, but unfortunately she won't stay at this house in the future. She knows how much Lin Xueme has been lenient. If she were the original owner, she would probably slap her face to serve and kneel for a night. Lin Xueme actually didn't fully believe Wang Yuching's words. She was shrewd and suspicious, and even searched Wang Yuching's whole body, but couldn't find a penny. Wang Yuching had already anticipated this and candidly asked her to search, saying, I really gave it to Yu Yen. Lin Xueme couldn't find evidence, and because Wang Yuyan was still angry about hiding private money, her hair was nothing compared to hiding private money. However, due to daytime events, Wang Yuching was fined not to have dinner. Of course, her changes were noticed by sharp-eyed Wang Yulan and Lin Xuame, especially when the fourth wife Wang Yuchuan said, Silly second is not foolish anymore, and she has become more beautiful than third sister. Wang Yuching is not panicked either, after all, in this era, there is no concept of rebirth or time travel in their minds. At most, they feel dizzy and wake up with a bright mind, or they may have fallen ill. Wang Yulan looked at her with a scrutinizing gaze and said, I used to shrink my head and mind, and I didn't even dare to breathe. Why do I dare to speak today? In Wang Yuching's words, there is a different meaning. You have read many books, intellectuals, and you must know a sentence. If you are anxious, even rabbits will bite people. Wang Yulan looked at her high up and said, That's funny. Who forced you? It wasn't all voluntary. Wang Yuching didn't say much to her and glanced at the big and small bags on the chair in the corner. Oh, your things haven't been moved back to the room yet. You're not waiting for me to come back and tidy them up, are you? I'm not willing to do it. After finishing speaking, I left. Wang Yulan deliberately left her things here and had to wait for this idiot to come back and tidy them up. Now she is extremely angry and has been wronged in her husband's house. She originally wanted to return to her mother's house with dignity and prestige, but ended up being frustrated. Lin Xueme looked at the back of Wang Yuching as she left, pondering various things, and said to Wang Jiandong, who was smoking next to her, You see, early in the morning I noticed she was different from usual. Wang Jiandong snorted, It's different. The wings are hard. Lin Xueme said fiercely, No matter how hard it is, I can break off my wings. Wang Yuching quickly closed the door when she returned to her room, took off her shoes, and took out a dollar from inside. She couldn't help but sigh that even a dollar now has to be a treasure. She took advantage of the fact that the whole family had taken a shower and took a simple paint remover, a tattered towel, and a set of patched clothes to take a shower. Although I know in my memory that the original owner was often beaten and pinched, when I untied my clothes, there were large patches of bruises, deep purple, cyan purple, and even yellow, which were clearly new and old injuries. Until she lay in bed and slept, her heart was sore and sore. These parents had to be very cruel, but if everything was better, a few years later, the original owner's parents would suffer from a work. Related injury, paralysis, and a serious illness, and she might even change the situation slightly. The next day, she woke up early and went to Lin Xuame's window as usual to get the keys. She received four eggs, corn flour, and a little wheat flour. Four eggs, one for the eldest Wang Yulan, 
one for the fifth Wang Yubao, one for Lin Xuemei and Wang Yuchuan, and one for Xia Jiandong and Wang Yuyan. Without her share, wheat flour and corn flour are added together to make a dumpling soup. In the kitchen, both cabbage and sweet potato can be added. The Wang family has two brushes of wealth, but Lin Xuemei is the kind of person who can hold a penny and sweat profusely. When going out, her relatives are empty-handed, and she is very cunning. Wang Yuching asked for an extra egg under the name of Wang Yulan. Lin Xuemei felt sorry but also gave it, after all, her eldest daughter brought a lot of things home yesterday. Lin Xuemei never worries about Wang Yuching stealing food. She has a clear grasp of the original owner. Although something happened yesterday and she felt that silly air had changed a bit, she still stood up early this morning to pick up the key from the window. She yawned and said to her husband next to her, I thought I had become sperm. Look, I didn't just make breakfast for the whole family. Even Wang Yulan leaned over the window and glanced at her coldly, sneering, my life as a maid. Wang Yuching was busy in the kitchen, feeling dizzy and disoriented. Cooking was quite simple, but it was a bit difficult to start a fire. First, use a match to wipe the fire, then light the pine bristles, quickly break some thin branches, and finally throw a thick chopping stick. After tinkering about ten times, I finally lit the fire and used up a box of matches. Hmm, it's okay. She is a bit proud. If she is proud, her mood will be good. If her mood is good, her appetite will be good. If her appetite is good, she will eat all five eggs. If she eats all of them, she will feel a little overwhelmed. If she is satisfied, she will also finish drinking the soup with bumps. After eating and drinking enough, there was a quarrel outside. She knew that Ji Xuening and the matchmaker were coming today, but she didn't know the exact time. It was a coincidence. She quickly went back to her room and packed everything in a snake-skin bag, then ran to the yard with the bag on her back. The people inside crowded at the door to watch the matchmaker and Ji Xuening outside, but no one noticed her. Lin Xuemei stood on the threshold, holding an enamel basin with a white background and red letters in her hand. Obviously, the water had already spilled out. She was speaking to the matchmaker because she was using a dialect that Wang Yuching didn't quite understand. There is a sentence that I understand. Food relies on resale, money relies on relief, and production relies on loans. Marrying your team would be shameless for me the rest probably despise the Ji family's poverty, both openly and secretly, and want to climb high, not worthy of the Wang family. She is not afraid of losing face with this, after all, she thinks she is reasonable, and also wants to show off her silly daughter. Some people rush to ask for marriage. Wang Yuching peeked out from the crack in the door and secretly looked at Ji Xuening, whose pants were wet. His appearance was very blurry in his memory. Although he had seen him from a distance behind his colleagues once or twice in 2023, he was already an old man in his seventies. Chapter 6 Lin Xuemei looks down on Ji Xuening. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ji Xuening's appearance is very different from the new century's fresh meat and the overbearing CEO in novels. He is tall and sturdy, standing with a straight back, a face full of righteousness, sword eyebrows and long eyes, a straight nose and a square mouth. His face is resolute and serious, exuding a masculine and tough spirit. She has read countless historical texts, in which the description of the male protagonist is used to describe a domineering CEO with a sharp and angular face, deep eagle eyes like a pond, a high nose bridge, tightly pursed thin lips, as if finely carved by God. Her eyes are cold and aloof, merciless and indifferent, and her every move is permeated with nobility. Wang Yuching once thought that there was also a domineering CEO in the era, but now seeing Ji Xuening's appearance, she feels that this appearance is only suitable for the current era. Her heart was pounding, this was her own dish. He also loved fresh meat and domineering CEO, but it wasn't the kind of love he wanted to have during the day and at night. 
And next to him, Wang Yulan and Wang Yuyan were also secretly looking at him, especially Wang Yuyan, who was covering her face with a rosy glow. Wang Yuqing knew that she wanted to get married at this moment, but she also despised being too poor. Lin Xuemei and the matchmaker started arguing and cursing, using particularly rude dialects and dialects. Wang Yuqing couldn't understand them, so she knew they were cursing very well. Lin Xuemei jumped up and cursed, Do you believe that I'm calling out for mercy after you finish your studies? The matchmaker jumped higher than her and said, You can try it on me. Don't think that I'm afraid of your whole family around me. I'll drive me crazy and beat you to death with a brick. When they rolled up their sleeves and wanted to fight, Wang Yuqing said, I'm willing to marry him. Dot. No one heard her words, let alone paid attention to her. Wang Yuqing blinked and squeezed out from the crack in the door with a snake skin bag on her back. She faced Lin Xuemei and the matchmaker, loudly announcing, I am willing to marry him. Lin Xuemei was only half a meter away from the matchmaker when she caught her. Suddenly, her voice interrupted her and she stared at her in amazement, feeling a bit overwhelmed. Ji Xuening, standing beside her, also frowned and looked at her. Lin Xuemei first reacted and roared, If you're willing, just say you're willing. Get out of here. She noticed the snake skin bag on her shoulder again and glared angrily, What are you doing? What do you mean by packing things? Wang Yuqing was not at all conceited, and even very confident. Of course, I packed my things and married into the Ji family. Ji Xuening and I were arranged to be together by my newborn grandfather and Ji grandfather back then. Although it was said verbally, it seems that Ji grandfather returned rice, white noodles, and canned goods to our house at that time, and we also received them, which is a tacit agreement. Lin Xuemei feels that without written evidence, it doesn't count at all. What would happen if she received something? What others want to give themselves? She said, what's the number without a word? Wang Yuqing. It was the old generation's grandfather who ordered the baby. It was my the final say whether to count or not. I don't agree with it. I agree with it. That is the count. Lin Xuemei was so angry that she gritted her teeth and grabbed Wang Yuqing, saying, Are you out of your mind? What are you doing when you marry his family? They are from the countryside, poor farmers, and their families are so poor that they can't afford it. You have experienced the same hardships as you did when you married them. Can it be even harder than staying at home? Wang Yuqing asked with a smile. Lin Xuemei was obviously stunned and she said again, he still has a blind old lady and three children at home. Do you want to marry and become a nanny? Staying at home is not just being a nanny. I have to take care of four of them at his house, while I have to take care of six at home. Wang Yuqing still wore a smile on her face. Lin Xuemei was a bit speechless when scolded. Wang Yuyan next to her exclaimed angrily, Mom, if she wants to get married, let her get married. Don't beg at our doorstep and leave our people behind. Wang Yulan is much smarter than her and said, Silly second, at least this is your home. Your parents are the ones who give birth and raise you. Even if you work as a nanny at home, you still repay the kindness of raising you. How could you think of being a nanny for someone else? You can't be so cold-hearted in your heart. Wang Yuqing felt contemptuous in her heart, but she smiled at Wang Yulan and said, You're not cold-blooded, you're hot-blooded. Your mother that I am. Law's family has money and power. Could you please introduce me to a family with good living conditions? Wang Yulan looked disdainful and said, What are you talking about? Do you still want to marry your husband's family with good living conditions like this? She looked down on the original owner and didn't say anything in his husband's family. Wang Yuqing replied, Why don't you help me talk about my mother? In law's family and still refuse to let me marry. You also say that I am not worthy of marrying into a better living condition. Then I want to marry into a kind. hearted mother. In law. At least I am also your younger sister. 
Do you think I won't be able to marry out and take care of your child after you give birth? However, my eldest sister has money in her family, and if I can't get married, I can rely on her. You can take care of me. Won Yulan was panicked in her heart, but her face remained expressionless. Let mom tell me, mom agrees to let you marry. What can we say? If we say too much, you still feel ungrateful that I'm harming you. She said high up again, nowadays, everyone's criteria for finding a partner are one army, two workers, and three workers. They will never marry a suffering person until they die. After all, if they have no education, low cognitive level, and no vision, they can't wait to find a man to marry. That's all they will do for a lifetime. Wang Yuching felt that what she said was reasonable and belonged to the realm of human consciousness. However, she did not know that the character of the man and the character of his family were also important, and she chose Ji Xuaning without suffering. Wang Yuching chuckled and envied, TSK TSK, you're right. Unlike you who have a high education and even married a projectionist husband, who loves you and takes care of you, and gets along well with your sister. In. Law. As for me, I really don't have any education and have a low vision, so I can only marry a rural person. In my memory, Wang Yulan's husband belonged to Ma Bao Nan, and even at the instigation of her mother, she had beaten Wang Yulan. However, her mother. In. Law passed away early, and she still took control of her husband later on. Wang Yulan always felt that being foolish was due to her own yin and yang, but she was unaware of her family situation. Every time she returned to her mother's house, she showed a high status in the family, so she felt like she was overthinking. But since yesterday morning, she has felt that this silly little guy she looked down upon has become eloquent. Lin Xuemei naturally disagreed, and she cursed again, marry a fart. Do you want to have some face? Are you in a hurry to get married? Are you out of your mind? Hurry up and die for me, breakfast is ready. She reached out to pull. Wang Yuching remained motionless and said, I said I want to marry Ji Xuaning. Lin Xuemei glared at her and said, You're going to die. You're not waiting in a good county town, and you're going to marry off to the countryside to endure hardship. Let's just endure hardship. Do you want to lose face with our Wang family? Wang Yuching looked at her calmly and said, The Ji family has three generations of poor and lower middle peasants, with a good class composition and strong roots. Ji Xuaning has also served in the army. Now, the poor and lower middle peasants are the masters of society. Don't be too afraid to speak up or look down on them. If you look down on their family, you will look down on our country. If you are reported, you will probably have to go to jail. Lin Xuemei looked at Wang Yuching as if she was serious and a little scared. The matchmaker next to her took the opportunity to say, My family is also a poor middle farmer. What did you just scold me for? I want to report you. Let her marry. Wang Jiandong walked out of the yard with a gloomy and composed face. If you love to marry, get married. Being poor or starving has nothing to do with us. Lin Xuemei glanced at her youngest son Wang Yubao, but still didn't want to say, what kind of marriage. Chapter 7 Lin Xuemei asks for four big items of milk gold. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Wang Jiandong glared at Wang Yuching and said, Do you think she can stay like this? She didn't treat us like parents when everything was packed up, but raised us for nothing. Lin Xuemei calmed her emotions for a moment and asked Wang Yuching seriously, Are you determined to marry or regret it? Wang Yuching glanced at Ji Xuening, who was standing next to him and never spoke. The man had a good appearance good character, and a good family background. As long as she lived an honest life, she wouldn't be at a disadvantage. To live in this world, one must first satisfy material needs, followed by spiritual needs. Love is just a seasoning in life, it doesn't matter whether one has it or not, as long as one lives well. She nodded and said, yes, it's ironclad. Ji Xuaning's eyebrows moved, and he was a bit puzzled. The person in front of him was different from what he had heard from others. 
Of course, this was not important. He was very disgusted with the entire Wang family. If it weren't for his grandfather's dying wish and his grandmother's urging, he would not have come naturally. She can still stay unmarried. If she gets married, as long as she takes good care of her grandmother and children, he won't treat her unfairly. The matchmaker was momentarily stunned as he watched the play for the first time. Wang Jiandong roared angrily, hurry up and get out of here. Just pretend you haven't given birth to this unfilial son before, and don't come back in the future. Wang Yuching couldn't help but beg for it. She carried a snake skin bag on her back and eagerly urged the matchmaker to Ji Xuaning, let's go, what are you waiting for? Lin Xuemei glanced at Wang Jiandong and stepped forward to stop Wang Yuching, saying, Your father is angry. Don't come back, why don't you? You were born to us at least. Well, since you want to get married, I won't stop you. However, you were born in October and I raised you so much. You can get married, but right. She glanced at Ji Xuaning next to her and took a few steps forward to take away the gift. She smiled and said, you have to give what you should give. I can't say it. I'll give my daughter to your family as a nanny for free. You say. Ji Xuaning rarely spoke two words. Lin Xuemei didn't hesitate to say, the four major items need to be the same as everyone else, kicking, spinning, listening, and looking. I don't think your family can take them out right now, but I can give you time. You can give them to us in a year, two, three years, or so. Let's make an IOU, okay? Before Ji Xuaning could speak, she said to Wang Yuyan, hurry up and get your pen and paper. Wang Yuyan went in to get it. Lin Xuemei continued, what other engagement days, wedding days, and all kinds of gifts, big and small. I'll waive them for you. After all, your family's life is not easy and I'm not a cold-hearted person, am I? Anyway, my silly second son can't wait to roll up a blanket and go to your house, but yes, that milk money will definitely be given. Matchmakers are not good at jumping up and fighting back. They also say that the Ji family is a veteran who has made contributions to the country, and many yellow flower girls in the brigade want to marry him. Lin Xuemei recognized money but not people. She opened her mouth and said, where's money? Are you rich? Do you have a secure job? Can you afford a watch, sewing machine, or bicycle? Wang Yuching can actually refuse, but after all, it has occupied the body of the original owner. The original owner is biological and filial, so what she wants is given to her, which can be considered as repayment for the October pregnancy. Just as she was about to speak, she was interrupted by Ji Xuaning's words, How much do you want? He stared at Lin Xuemei with fiery eyes, speaking concisely. He didn't hesitate, but Lin Xuemei felt a bit embarrassed. However, she knew that the other person's family was poor, but even if they were poor, they would still squeeze some oil and water out. She said, Not much, only about 100 yuan. I have a colleague who gave 300 yuan as milk money to the groom when their daughter got married. The matchmaker sneered and said, Oh, if you don't know, you might think you're marrying a piece of gold, for major items, and milk gold. What's wrong with that? The phoenix on her branch. Your family doesn't even consider her a person, and marrying someone suddenly becomes a treasure. Lin Xuemei didn't get angry either. It's okay not to get married. Anyway, it's better to stay at home. She doesn't believe that silly air can still run away or not, and even if he runs away, he must be caught back. Wang Yuching, who was beside her, didn't know if this was an accidental injury. Her face turned a little red and she tiptoed to Ji Xuaning's ear, whispering and sincerely, If you marry me, I will be a good granddaughter-in-law, and also a broad-minded and honest stepmother. I will earn money for her four major items and 100 yuan of milk money myself. This request can actually be completely rejected by Ji Xuaning. However, marrying her is still my grandfather's last wish, and I don't want to hurt my grandmother's heart. In addition, the person in front of me spoke very sincerely. 
He also lowered his voice and replied, I will marry you as my wife, and this money is what I should pay. Wang Yuching stared blankly at his handsome profile and couldn't help but be moved. Ji Xuanning took a few steps forward with a loud and energetic voice. Milk gold, I'll give it. The matchmakers are all dumbfounded. Lin Xuemei was shocked and looked contemptuously, that's 100 yuan, not 10 yuan. Ji Xuanning spoke up and said, here, but I can't give it now. Lin Xuemei's face showed joy. As long as she agreed to give it, it would be okay to delay. After all, forcing him to take it out now is really not possible. Tearing her face would be bad if she didn't get a penny. She couldn't conceal her joy and said, Did you agree? Don't go back on your word. I'll give you one month and you'll have to bring it to my door when the time comes. Line Ji Xuanning's face remained unchanged. The matchmaker jumped hastily and said, Oh my goodness, you can't find a daughter. In law. How many girls in the team want to marry you, whether it's for the four major items or for the milk money? Ji Xuanning knew that the families of the girls in the brigade looked down upon him just like the Wang family, and he also understood the behavior of those girls. He would definitely not be genuinely good to his grandmother and children. And the person in front of her is one of my grandfather's last wishes, two of my grandmother's liking, and three of her simple, honest, hard-working, and capable personality, definitely better than those girls in the brigade. He believes he will make a lot of money and can afford the four major items. Wang Jiandong and Wang Yulan were both stunned and didn't expect the person in front of them to agree. However, more importantly, they felt that he was pretending to be fat with a swollen face, and that agreeing was just for the sake of face. Wang Yuyan walked out and handed a pen and paper to Lin Xuemei. Lin Xuemei quickly handed it to Wang Yulan and asked her to help write an IOU. In her mind, Wang Yulan had a high level of culture. Wang Yulan stood tall and wrote a simple IOU to pass to Ji Xuanning. Ji Xuanning glanced at the deadline of three years and without hesitation, he signed his name. Wang Yuching smiled happily. Wang Yuyan looked at her like that and muttered, look at her foolishness. I really thought I was going to be happy soon. Stupid, it used to be a problem whether I could eat enough or not, and I had to be someone's stepmother. She whispered, Sister, do you think he can take out the four major items in a hundred yuan? I don't think he can. Wang Yulan touched her stomach and said with a smile, I've said everything. If I can't bring it out then, I'll have to bring it out. If foolish air regrets it, let's not laugh at her from the side. She didn't mean to do that about your private money. Well, this reminded Wang Yuyan again. She gritted her teeth and stared at Wang Yuching, already beginning to imagine how to treat her then. Wang Yubao made a face and stuck out his tongue, saying, it's a bit rough. The silly second married the foolish big guy, and the countryside is full of poor people. It's really difficult to marry a wife. Now, the four major dowries and 100 yuan of milk money have all been shaken up. Chapter 8 Marrying a Rural Han and Getting Rid of His Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio Wang Yujuan applauded and laughed along. Wang Jiandong lit a cigarette and entered the house, not even looking at Wang Yuching. Lin Xuemei and her two daughters didn't stop, they both laughed along. Wang Yuching gave Wang Yubao a fierce glare, his gaze particularly fierce. He was so frightened that Wang Yubao instantly closed his mouth and shrank his head to hide behind Lin Xuemei. Lin Xuemei said coldly, why haven't you left yet? Didn't you rush to someone else's house to be a nanny? But. She was very shrewd. She had to search Wang Yuching's body in her snake skin bag, and finally took out a broken ceramic jar, a toothless comb, and a pair of pants with few patches from inside her words are, what's wrong? Do you want to use it to subsidize your mother? In law's family? Wang Yulan said, No wonder yesterday was suddenly so abnormal. I got up early today to continue making breakfast. Wang Yuching suddenly hiccuped and laughed, saying, I did have a plan yesterday. 
I woke up this morning to make breakfast because I thought we were family, you are all my relatives, and we are all leaving. I will definitely make our last breakfast for you. She looked at Wang Yulan with care and said, I even specifically asked for an extra egg from my mother for you this morning. You're pregnant now and need to eat more nutritious food. Wang Yulan sneered with her nose, thinking she could handle it, but it turned out she wasn't trying to please herself. Lin Xueme finally said, go back to the house, hurry up and eat. After eating, you still have to go to work. You finally have a secure job. Being late is not acceptable. Both inside and outside the words were mocking Ji Ning for not having a secure job. Ji Xuening's expression did not change much, but suddenly reached out and took the snake skin bag from Wang Yuching's shoulder without speaking. Wang Yuching knew his intention and felt a bit embarrassed, saying, I'll do it myself. Ji Xuening insisted on taking away the snake skin bag, lightly tossing it on his shoulder, and strode forward. Chen Imo covered his mouth and smiled, Comrade Yuching, you have chosen the right person. Ji Laosi is very kind, kind-hearted, and looks impressive. If you live well with him, you will definitely have a happy future. I also think so. Wang Yuching pretended to be shy and smiled. She looked up at the courtyard of the Wang family and let out a deep sigh, finally getting rid of this one. The scene of the original owner's death comes to mind, which is a snowy winter. The original owner, who is less than fifty years old, has white hair all over his head, wrinkles on his face, and is even thinner than skin and bones. She was wearing only tattered and thin clothes, feeling hungry and cold. She leaned on a stick and trembled as she walked towards the garbage dump ahead. Unfortunately, I fell into the snow before I could even walk. Wang Yuching's thoughts returned to her mind, and she patted the dust belonging to the Wang family on her body, feeling unlucky. She turned around and followed in the footsteps of Ji Xuening and the matchmaker. From afar, she could hear Lin Xuemei's howling. Where are my eggs, where are my lump soup? Oh, this damn fool! When she caught up, Wang Yuching had already walked far away. If it weren't for fear of missing work time, Lin Xuemei would have caught up every three streets. Along the way, Ji Xuening remained silent, while the matchmaker beside him kept looking at Wang Yuching with unfriendly eyes. Wang Yuching smiled at her and said, Auntie, I am now a member of the Ji family. The Wang family has nothing to do with me. Just now, you were so eloquent that you almost couldn't resist scolding Lin Xuemei. I've been angry for so many years, so I thought you helped me vent my anger. You are really amazing. Speaking of which, I would appreciate it if you could accompany Ji Dongming all the way. I remember your kindness in my heart. Sweet-tongued and talkative, not at all like braised taro. The matchmaker's face also softened and he spoke, you're different from your mother everywhere. She's just not a person, she's very irritable. Wang Yuching nodded and said, Auntie is right. This made Chen Emo a bit confused, but her disgust towards Wang Yuching also decreased significantly. Walking to the market, Ji Xuening suddenly stopped and looked at a state.owned department store across the street. He spoke calmly, I'll make you a set of clothes. It's about making a set of clothes for you, not asking if you want to make one. Wang Yuching felt very comfortable hearing these words, but still shook her head and said, no need. Chen Mo looked at Wang Yuching's clothes and said with a click, look at what you're wearing. It's patched and shorts, and the sleeves are all ragged. It's not as good as what we rural people wear. Ji Laosi is also a very meticulous person, and I know I'll add another piece of clothing for you. Wang Yuching felt embarrassed and refused again, I really don't need it. I have clothes inside. Chen Emo smiled and said, don't be polite either. Today is a home proposal, and it should have been successful. The man will have to pull a few pieces of fabric and buy a pair of shoes for you. Ji Laosi has already prepared the tickets and money. After finishing speaking, she said again, you young couple, first go to the department store for a stroll. As for me, I also need to add some things to my home. 
I will come to the door of the department store to find you later, or you can wait for me at the door. After Chen Mo left, Wang Yuching followed Ji Xuaning behind and entered the department store. As soon as they entered, they saw the slogan, Develop the Economy, Ensure Supply. Ji Xuaning let Wang Yuching choose on his own, he just stood silently by his side without any impatience, unlike some men who rush after just a few minutes of shopping. Cloth rolls are arranged neatly on the wooden shelf behind the salesperson, with black, blue, gray, and military green as the main colors, creating a strong sense of vintage. Wang Yuching felt that these fabrics didn't look as good as the styles and colors of the fabrics on the opposite side, such as, Dacron. However, Ji Xuaning definitely couldn't afford to buy, Dacron, with the money in his hand. Ji Xuaning followed her gaze and touched the ticket and money in her pocket, but did not speak. Pulling cloth requires tickets and money. He holds the cloth tickets that the whole family has saved up for the Chinese New Year in his pocket, which can afford to pull a set of clothes. However, the complete set of clothes over there only requires money and is also very expensive, so he cannot afford it. Wang Yuching knew that in this era, a person's annual cloth ticket was only three feet long, and three feet could make at most one leg of a pants. However, Ji Xuaning's family had poor conditions, so he probably held the cloth ticket that the whole family had saved up for a year. She finally pointed to the nearby woven fabric and said, I'll take this, just make a top. Ji Xuaning was a bit surprised. Now that everyone wants to make a good set of clothes, she doesn't. He said, this is not good, this is not good. You can choose the cotton cloth over there. I can afford it. Wan Yuching can see from this that Ji Xuaning is still very good. Although his family is poor, he is not stingy. She also knows that the quality of recycled fabric is poor and not durable, but after all, it is not good to use someone else's money now. She said, that's it, it's pretty good. Ji Xuaning didn't talk to her either, but simply said to the salesperson, I need 10 feet of cloth and 3 feet of cloth to make shoes, blue. Wang Yuching knew that a 10-foot cloth could make a set of adult clothes, while a 3-foot cloth could make a pair of shoes. She secretly glanced at the cloth ticket that Ji Xuaning took out of his pocket, which happened to be just a 13-foot cloth ticket. He eventually used his spare money to purchase some daily necessities for her. The salesperson still smiled and said, Your man is really kind to you. If he is willing to buy, you can keep it. Unlike my man, he doesn't want to buy it for me at all. Stepping out of the department store, Wang Yuching held the cloth in her hand, lowered her head, feeling guilty all over. She accidentally bumped into his sturdy back and rubbed her forehead with a slight pain. Ji Xuaning turned to look at her forehead, wanting to say something but feeling his tongue tangled. After all, he was not good at speaking. He simply reached out and picked up the cloth in her hand, saying, let me do it. Chapter 9 The Last Wish of Grandpa Ji's Death You are listening at NovelFull.audio Wang Yuching thanked him and said, thank you for spending the money. He carried a snake skin bag on his left arm and shoulder, and a cloth in his right hand. Although he didn't like to laugh, his words were very pleasant. It's not a waste, this is the money that should be spent. After speaking, I won't say more. Wang Yuching can see that he is only fulfilling his duties, coupled with his innate kindness, but in fact, he still has a sense of alienation from himself. Wang Yuching didn't take the initiative to ask questions and stood beside her. After waiting for about ten minutes, Chen Imo returned. As it was a cold market today, she didn't buy anything because there were few vendors. Instead, she couldn't wait to see the fabric pulled by Wang Yuching. She said, this material is really good. It's almost enough to make a set of clothes, at least a little less. However, when I get my wedding certificate, I will receive a two Zhang cloth ticket, and then I can make two sets of bride's clothes. In this era, people can receive cloth tickets for marriage. She said again, this is also the first time I've encountered this. I came to the door to propose a kiss and directly brought the person back. 
I've been a matchmaker for so many years, and I've said a lot of kisses. The girl and the half-grown boy blush and feel embarrassed to say a few words when they first meet. Wang Yuching smiled awkwardly. Chen Imo laughed heartily again and said, You're the first one to be so open up minded and bold, but I just like you. You're such a big jerk, right? Wang Yuching followed with a faint smile. Chen Imo looked at Wang Yuching and couldn't help but click and say, I've noticed that you look completely different from your mother. You're just a little thin and a little yellow, but you're really nice. If you take good care of yourself, you'll definitely be incredibly handsome. Wang Yuching also praised, Auntie is so young, especially her skin is really white. Chen He covered his face shyly, but he stood up and showed off. Well, I'm famous for being white in our tourist team, and I can't be tanned in the sun. Everyone praises me for being as white as Mantu. Wang Yuching almost burst out laughing. After speaking, she looked at Wang Yuching seriously and said, This matter has come to an end. You and your family have also caused a scene. Now, you can only go home with Ji Laosi. However, you are not old enough and only 24 years old. Nowadays, the country advocates late marriage and childbirth, and the certificate cannot be obtained. If you attend a banquet, you will be reported. However, since you have entered the Ji family's door, you are a member of his family. You are the wife of Ji Laosi, and you will be a couple in the future. You must make a decision, and you cannot regret anything at that time. Wang Yuching looked up at the person walking ahead. Having traveled through this era, the best choice for now is Ji Xuanning. She nodded and said, I've made a decision. In this era, family planning was fully implemented in both urban and rural areas, and late marriage and childbirth were also linked together. The age of late marriage was 25 years for urban women and 27 years for men, and 20 years for rural women and 25 years for men. At the age of marriage, a notice of late marriage will be issued. Bring this plan, household registration book, and team introduction letter to the local commune to handle the marriage registration procedures. Ji Xuanning is 27 years old this year. He received a notice of late marriage two years ago, but he refused to come to propose until Grandpa Ji passed away and left a last wish. In addition, Grandma Ji kept urging him, so he agreed to come to propose. Chen Emo was also worried that Wang Yuching might run away from behind when he said this. After all, there was no involvement from her family behind her, and she didn't have a certificate. If she ran away, where would she go to find someone? Where can I get my milk money back? Wang Yuching thinks it's better not to hold a banquet without obtaining a certificate, as it saves a lot of trouble. Along the way, Ji Xuanning didn't say much and deliberately distanced himself from Wang Yuching, allowing Chen Emo to chat with him. Chen Emo spoke a lot without stopping. Firstly, let's talk about Ji Xuanning's family situation. He has two older brothers and one older sister. Four years ago, his elder brother was killed by the newly appointed production team captain and deputy captain for persuasion. His sister Dadin Dot Law was a rural educated youth who abandoned her child and returned to the city after giving birth to her youngest daughter. The eldest son is 12 years old, the youngest son is 10 years old, and the youngest daughter is 4 years old. Grandma Ji feels sorry for their lack of parents at a young age, so she adopted them all to Ji Xuanning, and her uncle became his father. Wang Yuching only realized that no wonder she didn't have an ex wife. She didn't actually consider herself a stepmother after marrying like this. Second brother and second sister Dot in Dot Law also separated directly that year, without much interaction with them. Sister married the neighboring brigade a few years ago and still has no children. Wang Yuching doesn't know these things, after all, the original owner came to the Ji family to work as a nanny, and besides working, he wouldn't have gone to learn more about these things. The rest tells about some interesting things about the production team. Wang Yuching kept smiling out of politeness, but in fact, he listened very uninteresting. However, Chen Emo suddenly talked about the matter of Wachin. 
She learned from her that Grandpa Ji's only wish after falling ill and passing away a year ago was to let Ji Xuaning marry the original owner. She also grabbed Ji Xuaning's hand and warned, Marry the second son of the Wang family back home, you must treat her well. If you bully her, I won't even close my eyes underground. According to the original owner's memory, when Lin Xuemei was pregnant with the original owner, she suffered from premature birth and heavy bleeding due to eating folk remedies. At that time, it happened to be in the middle of the night when she had an argument with her mother. In law and ran out. Ji Baogua met her on the way and kindly sent her to the health center. If it weren't for his timely delivery, both adults and children would not have been covered, and he also helped pay for the medical expenses. After Lin Xuemei's whole family arrived, he recognized that Lin Xuemei's father. In. Law Wang Xiangyang was actually an old acquaintance with him. The Wang family found out that she was a girl and no one wanted to hold her, so he held the original owner in his arms. As a result, the crying original owner suddenly stopped crying. He felt destined and took the initiative to propose a doll marriage. Wang Xiangyang readily agreed. Wang Yuching felt that Grandpa Ji was a good person, but he still couldn't understand. Even though the Wang family owed him kindness, why did he rush to ask Ji Xuaning to marry the original owner back home and give advice before passing away? Because after booking a doll wedding, Grandpa Ji not only delivered rice, white noodles, canned goods, but also brought clothes and milk powder to his doorstep many times. At that time, the relationship between the two families was still good, until Wang Xiangyang passed away five years later, and Grandpa Ji's family was also unable to afford things due to poverty, so they came several times and were locked outside the door. The Wang family is also unwilling to walk around with the Ji family, looking down on them both openly and secretly, and not even mentioning the matter of child marriage. So, why does Grandpa Ji insist on being a child and still remind Ji Xuaning before he dies? Even if you like the original owner, you wouldn't be so kind, would you? Regardless of whether my grandson is willing or not. At this moment, Chen Hung interrupted her thoughts and said, Comrade Yu Ching, why don't you go talk to Ji Laozi? You go ahead, go. She felt a little dry mouthed when she spoke, so she pushed Wang Yu Ching forward. Wang Yuching ran slowly to catch up, and the person in front seemed to hear footsteps. He slowed down slightly and said, The front is the location of the Dainyu commune. In two hours, it will be the location of our Jinyo Brigade headquarters. It's only about ten minutes away from our Nyashuan production team. Do you need to rest without rest? Jinyo Brigade belongs to an administrative village, while Nyashuan production team belongs to a bay or ditch within the village, with a population of over 200 and 120 members. Wang Yuching wants to laugh, but we can't do without the word, bull. She shook her head and said, no need to rest. Go home early to avoid delaying your work. Chapter 10 Double Generation Stores Buying Things for Children You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ji Xuaning, the only physical worker in the Ji family, took a half day off to propose marriage. If he didn't work, his work would be reduced, and the whole family was waiting to eat and drink. Although it's early June now, it's already extremely hot and my face is sweating. The man in front also noticed and took a few steps to the roadside, pulling two large leaves that were as big as a hat. He handed them to Wang Yuching and said, Comrade Wang Yuching can use this to cover his head. After speaking, he handed another leaf to Chen Moth behind him. Wang Yuching took the tree leaves and placed them on top of her head, feeling novel and playful. She said, Well, you can just call me Wang Yuching. Adding a comrade always feels a bit awkward. Ji Xuaning nodded and said, Okay, Wang Yuching. Chen Mo covered his mouth and chuckled behind him. On the following journey, neither of them took the initiative to speak. Although she walked with pain in her feet and was sweating from the heat, the scenery along the way was indeed beautiful, with clear mountains and clear waters, blue sky and white clouds, and no pollution or noise from the city. Everything was so natural and fresh. There are other members of the production team working together in the field, 
everyone laughing and laughing, and some singing in the field. Wang Yuching saw donkeys and horses on the road, as well as animals that looked both like donkeys and horses. Although she had never seen them before, she knew that this was a hybrid of horses and donkeys called mules. She couldn't conceal her excitement, her entire expression was surprised and unfamiliar. After walking for another two hours, she arrived at the brigade and saw various red slogans posted on the walls, which were particularly eye-dot-catching. Chen Emo pointed to a double-generation store at the entrance of the brigade village and said with a smile, this is the largest shopping mall in the village, covering everything. You can buy whatever you want. After finishing speaking, she leaned into Wang Yuching's ear and whispered, the salesperson inside is the daughter of our brigade director. When we ran for salesperson together, we ended up relying on our old man to be the brigade director and canvassing votes everywhere. Humph, she is very relaxed every day and can even record work points. Standing there, we can share our rations. Wang Yuching knew that the meaning behind her words was just a smile, and she didn't like to gossip behind her back. She knew that in this era, double agent stores referred to grassroots stores in rural supply and marketing cooperatives that extended to production teams for purchasing and sales. Wang Yuching had already taken out a dollar from the sole of the shoe when they were not paying attention. She felt in her pocket and considered whether to go in and buy something for the three children. According to the original owner's memory, those three children were very obedient and well-behaved. Should I buy them something? She decided to bring them something later on, not just because she wanted to please them but because she felt sorry for them. Wang Yuching said, wait a moment, I want to go in and buy something. Ji Xuaning stopped to look at her and asked, what are your shortcomings? I'll go in and buy it for you. Chen Emo was a bit reluctant and said, what else are you buying? Didn't Ji Laosi buy you daily necessities? Why are you wasting that money? Wang Yuching smiled and said, I'm not buying it for myself. I want to go in and buy something for the children. Chen Emo smiled and said, oh, it turned out to be for those children. It's rare and rare. Your heart is really different from your mother. When you first come in, you have to buy something to make sense. Besides, you're here and won't leave. You'll be eating from the Ji family in the future. Ji Xuaning refused, but Wang Yuching insisted on buying, saying, I don't buy anything valuable, I'll buy some small things to give them. Actually, the pocket is only one yuan. Although the double generation store is not as good as the department store in the county town as the supply and marketing store in the commune, there are also many samples, and basic daily necessities for the members are available. Of course, there is no cloth, grain, meat, or oil. Buying these requires tickets, and farmers do not have these tickets except for the cloth tickets issued by the state. Grain, meat, and oil are all distributed by the production team for their own production. So it's impossible for a double generation store to sell these things, even if you get meat, grain, and oil tickets from elsewhere, if you want to buy them, you have to go to the supply and marketing agency of the commune. Other daily necessities, tobacco, alcohol, sugar, tea, and miscellaneous agricultural tools are quite complete. The salesperson was a short, chubby young girl dressed neatly and cleanly. She was cutting her nails when she saw Wang Yuching leading the way and said coldly, what would you like? Wang Yuching said, let me take a look. The salesperson ignored her and just as she was about to continue cutting her nails, she saw Ji Xuaning and Chen Emo coming in. She quickly put down her scissors, straightened her two thick braids, and grinned, Brother Ning, why are you here? What do you want to buy? Ji Xuaning didn't look at her either and said, I'll accompany Wang Yuching to buy things. Chen Emo seemed to deliberately say, What kind of Wang Yuching? Wang Yuching has more children. Ji Laosi is accompanying his wife to buy things for the three children in the family. The salesperson's smile stiffened, and she was clearly unhappy. Where did Ning get his wife? Aunt Chen likes to talk nonsense. The word, you, broke Chen Mo's defense, 
and she glared at the salesperson with her hands crossed over her waist in a loud and thunderous voice, saying, Why is it like Hua? Did your parents not teach you to respect your elders? How could Hua see her getting angry and mutter vaguely, I used to love talking nonsense, but the whole team doesn't know. After speaking, she suddenly remembered that Ji Xuanning did indeed have a child relative from the county town. She had always thought that this matter would definitely not work, not to mention the county town, her family despised the poverty of the Ji family. Her father is the brigade director, and her mother is the women's director. She has repeatedly expressed her love for Ji Xuanning, but was scolded by her parents in full. She kept thinking, how good it would be if the Ji family didn't have Grandma Ji and her three children as burdens. She hurriedly asked Ji Xuanning, Brother Ning, is she the wealthy one in your county town who looks down on your child's biological partner? Ji Xuanning raised his eyebrows slightly and replied, Yes. How could Hua, upon hearing this, be both angry and incredulous? Why is it so sudden? I heard that her family doesn't even agree. Why? Chen Imo interrupted her and grinned, Today I came to propose marriage to Ji Laosi. They agreed, and from now on, they will be a couple. After finishing speaking, he deliberately said in a sinister tone, speaking of which, many girls in our brigade are interested in the talent of the fourth generation. However, one by one, they also dislike his family's poverty and don't want to be their stepmother. Who would have thought that Comrade Yuching in the county town doesn't dislike him at all? She looked up and down at Wang Yuching and then said, Look at these good guys, they're so handsome. There aren't many in our team who can match them, especially those who grow fat like stone rollers while eating sweet potatoes. Look at the two of them, they're a perfect match for talent and beauty. Chen Emo did not mention in his words that Wang Yuching had just packed up his things and followed Ji Xuaning home with no intention of returning to his mother's house. After all, it's very shameful. I'm afraid that Ruhua will gossip everywhere. Although the people in the team will know sooner or later, these words cannot be leaked from their own mouths. How could Hua stare at Chen Emo, with sparks flying in her eyes? She knew that Chen Emo was unhappy with his daughter being outvoted by her own votes. Chen Emo said again, Comrade Yuching's first visit to our team is still our new daughter. In law, who specifically came to the double generation store to choose things for our children. As a salesperson, if you don't go to entertain us, let's see what the fourth daughter. In law wants to buy.